Hello again everyone, Tim here from Tim'sComputerFix.com and Tim'sComputerFix.net. In this video I will be reviewing the Yamakasi Cat Leap Q270 LED 2560 by 1440 HDMI monitor. Now this is the second video in my series. I did the unboxing in video one, so if you haven't seen that, go back and uh, take a look at video one for my unboxing. Uh, but in this video, I'm going to actually review uh, and let you guys know what I found as far as setting this monitor up um, resolution-wise on in different scenarios. So right now, what I have is a is a is a GTX 560 running through HDMI into my Cat Leap Q270 monitor. Now this is the very first time I've fired up this monitor, so I'm looking for things like dead pixels, stuck pixels. Uh, it's good to see that it did actually turn on and I'm getting a Windows display. Uh, so that was all a good thing. And really what I found out was, is after booting this computer, getting onto the desktop screen, I was very pleased to see that there was no dead pixels on this monitor. So that's good stuff there. I uh, fired up the first time. Now I did have uh, uh, a problem with the monitor not recognizing the video card input, which is the HDMI. So I had to go into my uh, control panel, my NVIDIA control panel, and actually uh, manually set my, uh, my resolution. The resolution right now is at 1920 by 1080. I need to get it to 20. 560 by 1440 and right here I'll show you exactly uh, how you go into the NVIDIA control panel and manually set these uh, display settings. So basically what you want to do is uh, right click on your desktop anywhere on your desktop if you right click you can then choose NVIDIA control panel and then from there you want to select uh, change resolution and click that and then down in the bottom you will see a list of your resolutions that are available then you'll see customize you can click that and then at the bottom again click create custom resolution and now in here you'll see uh, two areas horizontal pixels at the top and vertical lines at the top where you can enter your 2560 and your 1440 vertical and also pay attention to your refresh rate that's compatible with your monitor and then you can have a you can test your settings with the test button down at the bottom and it's just that simple you click apply and uh, your video resolution will be manually set to 2560 by 14. I will point out that this monitor looked pretty darn nice at 1920 by 1080 but now that we have this monitor set at the optimal resolution I like to run a few tests a few benchmarks here just to see how this monitor performs. I'm going to go ahead and run a benchmark here by NVIDIA that's called uh, Aliens vs. Triangles. Yeah, just to get us started. Well, I want to find out how these colors pop, and I'm still looking for dead pixels. Performance, obviously, is important. But uh, I will say also that, you know, viewing this through through YouTube, uh, it's, um, it's really not doing this monitor justice because, uh, to be quite honest, it's it performs very well the colors just pop the blacks are black it, it it's just I really I was more pleased than I ever thought I would be with this monitor uh, for the price especially um, close to f around four hundred dollars is just just a, a gorgeous display so we're reviewing this monitor here at stock settings. I mean, there's other settings on this monitor that we'll get into a little later, but uh, just out of the box. Um, have it messed with any of the color saturations or anything. It's just beautiful. Now I will also point out that this monitor comes with two built-in speakers. The Q270 model has two built-in speakers that pick right up on things as soon as I plug my HDMI cable in. Uh, we had a sound as soon as this benchmark started rolling. Okay, let's get another benchmark going here. This is another NVIDIA, NVIDIA one. It's called Endless City. And this will give us another great view of the beautiful colors and contrast there is here on the monitor. Okay, this camera angle does show and view this at an angle. And you can see how, how it doesn't affect the quality or the picture that much. 
So uh, this the specs claim a 178 degree viewing angle. Well, you know, I think that's over exaggerated a little bit. Um, if you move directly left or right viewing angles, if you're sitting in front of your monitor and you move directly to the left or directly to the right and stay even with your monitor, so to speak, it uh, it looks great. Same thing for up and down. If you're sitting directly in front of your monitor and you stand straight up looking down, it doesn't change much at all. It is the is looking at it at a at a angle is where things start to look a little bit washed out. So in other words, if you're standing up above your monitor and to the side at the same time, you do get a slight washed out look. But uh, so 178 degrees viewing angles, I think that's a little bit over exaggerating, but still excellent viewing regardless. I myself am not worried about those particular angles not looking well. And this benchmark here kind of shows off how the monitor looks as far as, you know, your grays, your dark grays, your light blacks, your dark blacks. So there's definitely some distinction there, and I like that. Okay, let's pump some real graphics through this monitor here. Here's a really good test. This is the Heaven benchmark. It's a DirectX, a DirectX 11 benchmark from Unigen. I believe that's how you pronounce that. It's, it's the Heaven benchmark. You can find it there on the internet, no problem. Uh, this is really going to push, push our video card to the max. And it's also going to show off the capabilities of our eye-popping monitor here. And there you go. Wow. Just some beautiful looking textures. The The color contrast just is amazing to me. Uh, I wish you could see it in person because really seeing it through this video camera does not do it justice. I mean already, can you imagine playing Battlefield on this bad boy? Or Diablo 3? Oh, I bet Diablo 3 looks awesome on this monitor. Now this monitor uses what's IPS technology, which is which means in-plane switching technology. And it's a step up above the TFT LCD uh, technology, uh, the liquid crystal, liquid crystal display. The TFT stands for thin film transistor. Those are what the, uh, the older monitors were made of, the old LCD ones. Old, I say older, but not that old. This IPS panel technology, this, this in-plane switching technology, can process high-speed signals without data loss by using copper wiring with low resistance. The IPS panels offer clear images and stable response time. Uh, the display is consistent and accurate color from all viewing angles, which we kind of touched on that a little bit. And the pan and the IPS panels do not lighten or show tailing when touched. So this new IPS technology is uh, definitely a, a beautiful thing to to look at. Here's a, uh, a YouTube video that I pulled up just to give you another idea of what maybe viewing a a video may look like on this monitor. This is the Big Buck Bunny animation, 1080p HD. This is by the uh, Blender Foundation. Head over to BigBuckBunny.org and check them out. Just to give you a, a quick view of how this monitor handles 1080p video. Very nice. Beautiful colors. Eye-popping colors, actually. Very pleased with what I see here. All right, with all that being said, let's get into a little bit of settings. This monitor comes with several settings. I was really quite surprised, actually, that it came with as many as it did from some of the things that I was reading. Um, here you see where the buttons are on this monitor. I'm just trying to give you a little bit of a better look here. Um, got a power button, up and down arrows, um, memory button, and an SE button. Um, Pretty standard stuff, really. The power button here is an obvious thing. Um, obviously, it turns your monitor on and off. When you have it off, it'll just be a red LED, like so. 
Um, be sure that you have a green LED when you go to power on your computer or your monitor will just sit there with a black screen and a red LED. Now when I first used this with the HDMI, um, I had trouble getting it to recognize, or getting my monitor to recognize it would not come on. It had a green light. So this SE button I had to use to change the input method here. And I had to actually locate and find the, the uh, HDMI setting manually. So don't forget about that. When you get this monitor, you might have to flip through these SE settings to find the correct interface. And, this, and in that case, it was HDMI. I now have this monitor hooked in through VGA, and I'm still running at 2560 by 1440. So even, uh, even your DVI's, uh, uh, DVI connections will work in HD 2560 by 1440. Here you have the menu settings. You can scroll up and down. You have uh, bright and contrast. You have um, your Windows positioning, your image settings, your color settings. We'll get on to all these in a minute. Your on-screen display settings I was quite happy with. Language obviously is important because you cannot read Korean and a miscellaneous. We'll get into that in a second. So let's get into brightness and contrast settings here. You can flip down between either one. Slide them up, slide them down. That's a good thing. All right. Now we have, we'll go previous and go down to the positioning. This is where you can manually position your, your screen. If it's offset, your desktop, your screen. And then you have an image setting here. We have pixel clocks and phase. You can change those and auto adjust. It's pretty nice. It has an auto adjust feature on that. Let's see. We'll move down to the color settings. Hey, hey. You can do manual color settings here. It's always a good thing. Blue, green, red, user defined. You can go normal, reddish, bluish. Don't really know why you would want that, but they're there. What else we have here? Uh, your on-screen display settings will basically let you uh, set your on-screen display uh, horizontal or vertically. And it'll also uh, give you a hold time, however long you want your on-screen display to stay before it times out and goes away. Language is very obvious. I touched on that. Your miscellaneous. Here you can adjust your aspect ratio and your DCR, that's your dynamic contrast ratio. I have it off for my desktop, but when I'm playing games, viewing movies, I have that on. Uh, it does help in the contrast ratio department, very much so. Uh, so a nice little set of uh, a nice little set of, of options here on, on your settings. Initialize it just returns everything to default. Well, that's going to about do it here for me here today. Uh, I want to touch on one thing about the stand. In my original video, I was complaining about the stand. Well, now I have an answer to that. I have an answer for that. Head over to monoprice.com and check out their adjustable tilting single desk mount bracket. Fits perfectly for this Cat Leap monitor and it's only for 20 bucks, 21 bucks plus shipping. Ah, uh, that'll correct that wobbly stand issue that I talked about in my video one. So if you haven't seen that video, go back and check it out. So that's going to be it for this video, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. And hey, if you purchase one of these Cat Leap monitors, come back to my YouTube stream and let me know what you think about it. I really appreciate the feedback. I like everybody's feedback. Hit that like button. Subscribe to my feed if you enjoyed this video. And, uh, you know, and I have many more reviews and computer repair videos coming your way. So until next time, everyone, see you soon.